Some people believe the church began with the 12 disciples. Other people would say the church began in the book of Acts, and they call that the birth of the church. But I say to you that according to the scriptures, the church existed from nearly the beginning of time. Let's read from the book of Acts, chapter 7. Now here we got Stephen speaking, and he's making his final speech. He said this just before they stoned him to death. Acts chapter 7, verse 35. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and, and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall you hear. This is he that was in the church, in the wilderness, with the angel which spake unto him, in the Mount Sinai, okay? Now, here we got very clearly, we've got, a, uh, we've got a reference to the church in the wilderness with Moses. Now, first of all, you need to realize what the word church really means. Now, nowadays, when you say church, people think of a building. But really, biblically, biblically speaking, in, you know, scripturally speaking, the word church, ecclesia, means called out ones the people who have been called out of the world. You know, the scripture says, you know, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Then I, then I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters. Okay? The, the church, it, when we read church in the Bible, it, it is translated from a word that means the called out ones. Those who have been called out from the world to be separate, to live separate lives, to be separate from the world. That's what church means. So when we read the word church in the scriptures, we're talking about a people of holiness, of righteousness, those who have been called out from the world, those who don't live like the world, those who don't think like the world, those who are separate, holy, those people are truly the church. Now, when, where did we ever get this idea that the church began when Jesus came in the flesh or sometime or thereabout or thereafter, you know, in the book of Acts? Well, I know a lot of people would refer to the, 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 uh, the verse or the passage in Matthew chapter 16. Let's go there for a second. Matthew chapter 16. We're going to start reading from verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? I just want to stop there for a second. The term Son of Man meant a lot to the, to the Jewish people and still does mean a lot to the Jewish people. Ben Adam, the Son of Adam, the Son of Man. Why would they, why would you, you, they call him the Son of Man? Or why would they call him Ben Adam? Because Ben-Adam refers to the seed that God was talking about when he spoke to Adam and Eve saying, your seed will bruise the serpent's head, which was the first prophetic word we got from God about the Messiah. So the word son of, or the, excuse me, the phrase son of man really refers to the Messiah. When you talk about son of man or Ben-Adam to the Jewish people, the first thing they think about, or at least the first thing they should think about, is the Messiah. Let's read on. Verse 14, And they said, they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist. Well, come back from the dead. Some, Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say you that I am? Whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, or Ben-Yona, for flesh and blood 
has not revealed it unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, the way it sounds here is like Jesus will build. In other words, it, it, it sounds like it, it did not exist at that time and that Jesus was about to start building it, which really is not truly the case. The word will build there is, is talking about continuing to build what's already there, okay? Jesus was saying that because Peter had this revelation, because Peter was chosen by the Father to really see who Jesus really was, that he was Ben Adam, the son of the living God and the Messiah. Jesus said, you're blessed and it's upon this rock that I will continue to build my church, the ones that are called out from the world. In other words, those who are called out, those who are holy, those whom I call out of, from the world to be holy and righteous will have the same revelation that you have, Peter, the same revelation, the same revelation that I am the Son of God and Ben Adam, the Son of Man, the Messiah. Okay, so this is not talking about something new here. This is talking about something that already existed. Obviously, in Acts chapter 7, verse 38, the church existed, okay? There, there's not two different churches. God doesn't have a double standard at all, okay? You think about it. When this was written, in the book of Matthew was written, when the book of Acts was written, there was no New Testament, okay? I mean, New Testament canon or, or, the, or anything like that. Nobody thought like that. The, the scriptures they had back then was only the Tanakh, only what Christians call now the Old Testament, including, I would add, the, uh, the apocryphal books and some other texts as well. But you've got to get out of your mind this whole segregation between the Old Testament and New Testament. And I, did a, I, I wrote an article about this, and uh, I've done a video about this, and I'm going to continue to do videos about the difference between the Old Testament and New Testament. But it's, it's very important for, for you to understand that there is one church, one faith, one Lord. You know, there's one law, there's one path to salvation. It is something that God has forever settled in heaven because it says that His Word is forever settled in heaven. He doesn't say one thing and then change, say, oh, you know what? It was wrong. I have to do something different. I have to start something new. Okay, that's, that's more or less what a lot of Christians believe. And that's wrong, okay? So we need to stop believing that. We need to start believing the truth. So that this video right now is to address the fact that the church existed long before Jesus was born in the flesh. The church existed in the wilderness with, with Moses, okay? The church existed, I would say, way before that even. Now, we, I can't point to a specific verse that explicitly states that, but come on. You think about it. The church means people who are called out from the, from the rest of the, the, the world system, called out from being a sinner, called to be a, a righteous. So I would say that the church could have started with Adam and Eve, but it, I would say for sure this, the church started with Abel, Avail. The church started with Abel because Abel was the first righteous. He was called out from the world. He had a revelation of Jesus Christ. He had a revelation that Jesus was the Messiah. He had a revelation of the Lamb of God. Otherwise, why would he be offering the firstborn lamb? Okay? Why would he offer his firstborn lamb if he didn't have a revelation of who Jesus was? And, and Jesus being the firstborn lamb, okay? Obviously, Abel had a lot more knowledge than you may have thought, okay? He had a lot more knowledge about who the Lord was, who God was, who Jesus was. We know that Jesus existed from the beginning of creation. It says that clearly in the scriptures. He is the Word. The Word was made flesh, and the Word existed from the beginning. So yes, the church existed 
from at least the time of Abel. So stop saying that the church was born in the book of Acts. So the church started here when, when Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. No, he was talking about he will continue what's already there. He will continue building. He will build upon that which is already there. Okay, so we need to stop saying the church began in the New Testament. It did not. It began way long before that, thousands of years before that. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to stop by again tomorrow as I'll be posting new videos regularly. Thanks again.